Hi, this is Plot, and in this video, I want to tell you about hematopoietic stem cell signaling. So the stem cell makes almost all the blood in your body. And a person usually comes with about 10,000 hematopoietic stem cells. All the blood cells can come from any of these 10,000 hematopoietic stem cells. And blood cells can be traced back to that original hematopoietic stem cells. This is because blood cells are the clones of that source hematopoietic uh, stem cell. And as a person ages, the number of uh, available hematopoietic stem cells is going to decrease. And sometimes most of the blood a person has, usually these are people over the age of 70, can come from uh, just a few uh, hematopoietic stem cells. And this is because most of the available hematopoietic stem cells will be gone by the time somebody gets uh, very, very old. Okay, so let's talk about um, where they come from. This is the uh, embryo, and embryo is going to grow to become a baby. And at around three weeks, a body has to start making blood vessels, uh, heart, etc., to accommodate it for its metabolism. And for this, uh, the body makes this thing called aorta gonad mesoneferous. Basically, this is like one thick blood vessel, and it's thick because it has a thick a wall. And uh, this thing is going to eventually become aorta, which is going to form the heart and also other structures. But these cells can also uh, make the hematopoietic uh, stem cells. And by the way, this structure is uh, derived from mesoderm. So all the blood come from mesoderm. Now, as the baby grows, then eventually the baby is going to start making the bones, blood vessels. And again, the hematopoietic stem cell wants to get to the bone because hematopoietic stem cells home is in the bone marrow. So let's talk about this homing process. Um, here is a blood vessel. And imagine this vessel is found right here inside of a bone. And hematopoietic stem cell is traveling and is trying to go across this region. The cells of the wall, just like these uh, cells of the aorta gonad mesonephros, have special capacity to do some trick. And these cells are endothelial cells and they have a lot of uh, membrane proteins. And some of these membrane proteins are VCAM, ICAM, E-selectin, and the P-selectin. And also the endothelial cells can secrete floating proteins called CXCL12. And every time you see this kind of name, CXCL or CCL, etc., they're floating proteins that attract things. So what happens is that the attracting molecules will attract hematopoietic cell cell to get to this vessel. And then E-selecting, P-selectin will grab onto the passing HSC. And ICAM and VCAM will also grab onto HSC, and together they will slow down this fast incoming hematopoietic stem cell, which is going to start rolling, and eventually these uh, membrane proteins will pull it into the surrounding region. And this surrounding region is the bone marrow. Now, within the marrow, there are special places with special membrane proteins, and this membrane protein is called a KIT. And KIT is a ligand that's bound to this cell, but KIT can also be free-floating. And the hematopoietic stem cell here has KIT receptor called C-KIT. Uh, in addition, the structure here has a lot of um, membrane proteins that are nice with uh, hematopoietic stem cell membrane proteins. So, this hematopoietic stem cell can eventually get to this region and dock with these structures. Also, the region here has low oxygen concentration, ideal for hematopoietic stem cell house. So in summary, during the development, hematopoietic stem cells come from mesoderm-derived structure, aorta conat mesonephros, and eventually they will travel and get to bone uh, blood vessels and these vessel endothelial cells have special membrane proteins that will pull the hematopoietic stem cells out of the blood into the marrow. And within the marrow, the stem cell will be attracted to all of these uh, magic proteins and 
end up in its home. And one of the most important interaction between the niche and the stem cell is kit ligand of the niche and then the C kit receptor of the stem cell. Okay, so now let's talk about metabolic stem cells doing its job. So stem cell is going to copy itself and this copy can either be common lymphoid progenitor cell or common myeloid progenitor cell depending on the available signal. Common lymphoid progenitor cell will get out of the marrow and get to lymphoid tissues to do further development to become T cell, B cell, and K cell. But the common the myeloid progenitor cell is going to stay and turn into different types of myeloid blood cells. And this agent that's going to induce the copy to be common myeloid instead of lymphoid is granulocyte macrophage colony stimulating factor. These are again floating proteins and uh, they're secreted by different types of cells and eventually we'll get to the marrow to induce this differentiation. And if kidney has secreted a lot of erythropoietin, EPO, then this myeloid progenitor cell is going to eventually become red blood cell. And if kidney secreted a lot of rhombopoietin, TPO, which can also come from liver and the marrow itself, then TPO is going to induce the making of a megakaryocytes. And megakaryocytes can break into many pieces to make platelets. By the way, there's nice negative feedback here to prevent overproduction of megakaryocytes. That's by having TPO receptor on each of these platelets. So these platelets can now travel throughout the body, bind to these TPO and degrade them. Many types of cells can make another ligand called the granulocyte colony stimulating factor. It's different than this one. And this stimulating factor is going to induce the making of neutrophil, basophil and eosinophil. And all of these are uh, granulocytes, they're fills. They have a lot of uh, uh, granules and they can secrete these granules, except neutrophil, which eats uh, other stuff. Now, um, I just want to talk a little bit about the neutrophil because it's special. The reason is neutrophil is also able to work on this niche and cut all of this interaction, especially the VLA4, uh, VCAM1 interaction between. And this cutting seems to be important in freeing this stem cell to get out of the home. And all of these ligands, EPO, TPO, ECSF, and even KIT, uses the JAK-STAT signaling. And in a JAK-STAT signaling, the receiving cell will have a special receptor. It could be EPO receptor, TPO receptor, could be also C kit. And uh, a ligand will bind, free-floating ligand like TPO, EPO, GCSF, or kit ligand that's bound to the niche cell. Then the receptor is going to activate another protein inside called JAK, and JAK is going to activate another protein called STAT. And the STAT is going to get to the nucleus and change the expression of this cell. And this JAK stat signaling is very common in blood cells. And also in the signaling, the ligand is pretty common. It's traveling throughout the body, but the receptor is selectively expressed on special types of cells. In fact, cells like melanocyte and the germ cells also have a C kit like receptors, free floating kit can help these cells to mature, differentiate. And people with a problem in their C kit, kit receptor, can have poor pigmentation and uh, low fertilization. Of course, people with a problem in C kit can have problem in all of these blood cell making. Now, uh, let's talk a little bit more about blood diseases, especially myeloproliferative uh, neoplasm. Myeloproliferative, so all of these are uh, marrow differentiating steps, neo, new plasm shape. So it's a making of a new cell types of cells that shouldn't be there and they're bad. First example is chronic myeloid leukemia. And uh, these are uh, blood cells that have special gene that is the fusion between BCR gene and then the ABL gene. Usually these two genes are on two different chromosomes and shouldn't be fused, but when they are fused, they make a fused bad protein and this results in the leukemia. And there's actually a treatment for this and there's a special drug called Gleevec that can inhibit this fusion protein. And the next uh, disease is polycythemia vera. Um, people with polycythemia vera 
have a problem in their jack uh, protein, especially jack 2. So problem with the jack protein will lead to um, activation of this jack even without the ligand that's stimulating it. So without EPO, without TPO, without KIT-L, some of the cells can trigger the jack activation, activate STAT, and grow. And this uh, overgrowth can lead to a lot of bad blood cells and results in polycythemia vera. And the next uh, myoproliferative neoplasm is essential thrombocytosis. And the people with this disease have a problem in their TPO receptor. So what happens is that the TPO signal here that is secreted by kidney, liver, marrow uh, is not needed anymore for these common myeloid progenitors to become megakaryocytes and uh, platelet. And they will have lots of lots of platelet unnecessarily. And uh, they have also problem in recycling of the PO. So, and finally, to treat these diseases, worst case scenario, you have to get rid of all of this hematopoietic stem cells in the patient and add new hematopoietic stem cells without these defects. And before you can add new uh, stem cells, you have to first get rid of all these problematic hematopoietic stem cells and their derivatives. Today, people use radiation, chemotherapy, and other toxic uh, means to get rid of this uh, existing bat hematopoietic stem cells, but people are finding out these new ways to get rid of them. For example, uh, some people are making these monoclonal antibodies that can target C-kit and KIT. If you get rid of C-kit-KIT interaction, which is the most important interaction in this niche, then the stem cells maybe will be mobilized and uh, eventually be used up and be gone. And it looks like this approach is a little promising. Uh, so in the future, maybe without radiation or chemotherapy, you can just use these special targeted methods to get rid of existing hematopoietic stem cells. And then once these stem cells are gone, you can add new stem cells. So when patient gets these stem cells, stem cells will now go through the same homing process to get to their niche. And then these stem cells will start making functional, healthy blood cells.